Thy strong word did cleave the darkness at thy speaking it was done. Welcome to sermons from St. Paul's Lutheran Church of Minot, North Dakota. St. Paul's is anchored in the message of Christ crucified for the forgiveness of sins, for the church and for the world. The following sermon is from Rev. Dr. Matthew Richard. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the fourth chapter. Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. And the tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. And the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these I will give you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, be gone, Satan, for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Then the devil left him and behold, angels came and were ministering to him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. My friends, the easy road to hell is the long and, yes, gradual one. The hard road to hell is the sudden cliff. In other words, the road to hell is easiest by way of a gentle slope without any sudden turns and any warning signs. It is subtle. It is gentle. It is an even, yes, even, yet slightly downward slope. But how does the devil tempt people down this long and easy road to hell? Well, the devil puts a carrot on the end of the stick and draws humanity away from reality. But what is the carrot on the stick then? Well, that carrot on the stick is the unrealistic future that the devil paints for us. In other words, the devil, he dangles a fake future in front of people, and then he pulls them along, away from their past and present reality, into a dreamy and superficial future. You see, my friends, technically speaking, when we look to the past, we are dealing with reality. Past regret and past gratitude, they're actually rooted in real-life things that have happened in real time and space in the past. We have regret for the past sins that we have committed, and we have gratitude for the blessings that we received. Again, they are rooted in real-life things that have happened to us in the past. And regarding the present time, well, when we look around in the present, we find things that we presently hate and things that we presently love. Again, our past and the present are grounded in real things, in real time, in real space, real events that have happened and are currently happening to us. But here's the point. Please listen carefully. Here's the point that is being made. The devil does not like to function in reality. So the devil likes to work in the realm of the future. He loves to play in the realm of future possibilities. Now, please keep in mind that our Lord God does speak of the future. However, when God speaks of the future, he does so to sober us up in the present moment. Now, if you consider a moment, remember back to the month of November, several months ago. 
Now, do you remember all those sermons that we heard about the second coming of Christ? Well, in those gospel readings, the Lord Jesus, he taught us about his second coming when he will resurrect our bodies from the grave and judge the living and the dead. However, keep in mind that when Jesus teaches about the end of the world, the end of time, he does not teach us to get lost in the future by drawing some sort of futuristic diagrams or predicting horoscopes or coming up with our own futuristic prophecies. Jesus is coming a second time. Indeed, he is. But we do not know the day and we do not know the hour. And so when the Lord taught about the future, he did so for the purpose of waking people up Get this, in the present, in the present moment. And so, when the Lord indeed taught about the future, he did so to wake people up in the present moment. The best way to be ready for Christ's future judgment and eternity is to be awake and sober in the present, before Christ and before his gifts. The second coming of Jesus should drive us back to the very present moment to be full of faith, awake and sober, alert, and ready in the present moment. But my friends, this is not how the devil works when he dabbles with the future. It is not how he works with the future. You see, the devil hates the past and he hates the present because he hates reality. He would rather play in a fictitious and pretend future realm that he can manipulate and drag people into. The devil's future is a long path towards nothing except darkness. This is what we see in the reading from the Gospel of Matthew here this morning. The devil, he comes along and he tempts Jesus. And with the temptation, he promises Jesus something in the future. Listen again to the devil. Bow down and, get this, I will give you the kingdom of the world. You see, when the devil tempted Jesus, it was all about this. If you do what I say, Jesus, I will give you something awesome in the future that you don't presently have. My friends, it is no different with you. It's no different with me. The devil loves to play with the future, and he does it quite cleverly by dangling future riches and future power and future control out in front of us, that carrot on the stick, to lead us down that gradual path. Now, if the devil can get you down that path, chasing after promises of future riches and future power and control, well, my friends, you will leave the present reality of life and live in the devil's playground of the future of fake promises. And yes, they are fake promises that are unhinged from reality, from present reality. You see, how do you get a man to hurt his wife? Think about this. How do you get a man to hurt his wife and his children? Well, the devil knows, just tempt the poor lad down the path into an unrealistic future where he is promised power and fame and control and riches. The devil can get a man so far down that gradual slope into so-called future riches and power that the man believes he is providing for his family. When in reality, he is so down that path of a pipe dream that he is punishing his family and his wife with brutal neglect. How do you get a woman to hurt her husband and her children? Well, the same. The devil, he paints a futuristic picture of bliss and harmony and love and delight. The devil can get a woman so far down a path into the future that she will hate her present reality of her husband and love that futuristic version of a husband. A futuristic husband that, I might add, does not exist except in the devil's version of reality of unreality, I should say. How do you get a Christian to despise Christ's church? Well, the devil knows. Just tempt parishioners with a futuristic version of the church with full pews and energetic members, full offering plates, and a charming minister. The devil can get young Christians in the church, and old Christians alike, to despise the faithful church that they have attended for years as he pulls Christians away from past gratitude and present love into his version of the future where he promises everything to so-called be that much better. And how do you get baptized saints to get bored with the word and sacraments? Well, the devil knows. Just tempt them with versions of the future 
with supernatural miracles and visions and signs that will surpass that boring old forgiveness of sins, the devil can get a whole group of people to neglect the word and sacraments and spend a lifetime, get this, a lifetime chasing after potential visions and signs and miracles. Ah, it's quite interesting. It is, is it not? Well, what is also interesting is to see how Jesus responded to the devil's tactics. Jesus does not, keep in mind, he does not debate the devil. When the devil attacks with his tactics and his words and his temptations, the devil indeed attacks, but Jesus, he does not debate the devil in a match with clever rhetoric. Jesus, he does not enter into a cage match fight to go toe-to-toe with the devil with good old-fashioned, with a good old-fashioned brawl. Jesus does not become a victim to the devil, longing for some other warrior to somehow come along and rescue him. Jesus also does not burst into tears or make a scene. He does not grab a smartphone to record the whole incident, to post this attack of the devil on social media, to somehow shame the devil. No, he does none of this. Instead, Jesus, get this, he quotes the word of God. He speaks scripture to the devil. Now, it might be easy to think that by quoting scripture, Jesus was somehow going old school on the devil, as if Jesus was trying to offset the devil's future conniving with God's past. However, by quoting scripture, Jesus was simply speaking reality back to the devil. He was speaking reality to the devil's unreality. Now, now, dear friends, uh, please hear this loud and clear this morning. We do not subscribe to God's word because it is old. Yes, we like old things here at St. Paul's, but we do not embrace God's word because it is old. No, rather, we hold to God's word because it is reality. You see, Scripture is reality. It is not a book for yesterday only, but it is a book for the present right now. If you can recall from Scripture itself, it says that God's Word is living. It is active here in the present. And so when Jesus quoted God's Word to the devil, Jesus was speaking, get this, reality to the devil. Jesus was speaking reality to the devil indeed. And my friends, the devil, he hates reality. The devil hates God's word because he hates reality. Baptized saints, it is so very easy. It's so very easy for us to be wooed down this subtle path with the rest of the world. It's easy for us to get tied up in futuristic frenzies, drifting away from the present abiding reality of Christ and our calling to all the neighbors right before us in our lives. The devil wants us always pursuing the end of the rainbow. He always wants us pursuing but never finding. He always wants us running after joy but never actually having joy. He promises us light, but in the end he gives darkness. But this is not who you are. This is not who each and every one of you are. You see, you are the baptized. You are baptized saints who have been given the word You've been given Christ. You have Christ and his word. So get this, you have reality. And so today, repent. Yes, repent. Repent with me of falling into the devil's futuristic playground of unreality. Repent of the temptations that pull you and me out of the present reality into superficial Yes, superficial, pretend, unrealistic promises that the devil dangles before us. Repent together and say, Be gone, O devil. Yes, be gone. Yes, say clearly and confidently this present moment. Say this. Depart from me, O devil. Go to hell with your fake future, unrealistic dreams and false promises. Indeed, depart, go to hell, O devil. I am presently baptized. I'm baptized into Christ. In the stead and by the command of Jesus, my pastor has absolved me of my sins. I am really forgiven in the present moment. I am forgiven. Hear this, O devil. I've also feasted upon Christ's holy body and blood. Jesus is in my belly. 
Therefore, I have forgiveness in me and for me. O oh, devil, I do not live by your futuristic pipe dreams. Your silly carrot on the stick will not lead me, for I'm captive. Yes, I'm captive, and I live by every word that comes from the mouth of God. His word is real, O oh, devil. You are not. Be gone, evil foe. And we can say, be gone, evil fool. Depart, be gone, for Christ has spoken and I have heard. I listen to my Savior. I listen to my Savior's voice, which is truth, which is purity, which is reality. In Christ, I lack nothing, but I have every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Jesus has redeemed everything and has given it all back to me as pure gift. My friends, we do not live in the devil's playground of the future with his pretend promises. We live right now in the present. We live in the present moment right now, receiving God's gifts, his word and sacrament, knowing we're among the baptized, knowing that we are redeemed, knowing that we belong to Jesus, knowing that his past is our past, and his future is the eternal life that is set before us, being awake and sober right now in the midst of the attacks of the evil one. We belong to Jesus. Live in the present. Christ is for you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thy strong word bespeaks us righteous, bright with thine own. Thank you for listening to today's podcast sermon. You can access a full manuscript of today's sermon from Pastor Matthew Richard's blog at www.pastormatrichard.org or visit St. Paul's website at www.stpaulsminot.org. The, the Lord, Lord bless and, and keep you. you.